Now let's go to wavelengths. So when we go to wavelengths, we see this, uh, where the first thing we need to do is set the number of wavelengths. As I mentioned before, uh, we're going to look uh, in this tutorial video at a three channel um, fluorescent slide. And, and in particular, the three channels that are stained here are uh, Texas Red, Fitzy, and DAPI. Uh, the Texas Red is mitochondria, the Fitzy is actin, and the DAPI marks nuclei. So in number of wavelengths, I'm going to click on three. I'm going to leave allow separate binning for each wavelength unclicked, and I'll explain what that is uh, later when I go into binning. But for now, just leave that alone. So now you can see that there are three sub-tabs here. Each of these sub-tabs contains the settings for one of the channels. And so one of the first things we need to do is to decide uh, which order we want to acquire the channels in. And so I always recommend that the order you go in is from longer to shorter wavelengths. So in our case, that would mean Texas Red first, which is what it says here, Fitzy second, and for the third, that would be DAPI. The reason for this is we want to start by imaging with uh, light that will damage the sample less and then move on to the more damaging wavelengths, which are the shorter ones. Now, the rest of this is going to look different depending on which camera you have. Right now, we are using the Hamamatsu Flash 4. And so for that camera, there are really only uh, two settings up here. One is the digitizer, which you should always leave to high precision 16-bit. And the other is the exposure. This camera doesn't really have uh, any other settings, and so we're just going to leave it there. Um, we don't want to auto expose, and we typically don't want to auto focus, so we're going to leave those alone, and we don't do any alignment cropping. For the other uh, channels, again, uh, these are the settings that you really need to worry about. You can also add a C offset relative to wavelength one if the particular channel that you're looking at uh, is. Um, that the information that you want is at a different Z position uh, relative to other channels. Uh, I will show you, uh, you how to do that um, individually if you need to. It's a little bit complicated to show in this video, so I'm going to skip over that. But know that you can. So if you have a, uh, a case where a nuclei are very much in a sunny side up egg configuration, and you want to have nuclei to track the cells, but also look at the base of the cell where it's attached to the glass, and those two things are in different Zs for the different channels that you're using to track them, know that there is a way to do that.